Hello and welcome to the ArtsLink Assembly uh, 2023. This is day two. Um, some of us are in Chicago, but many of us are in Ukraine. And I'm very happy that uh, many of you are able to join us from different parts of the world live online. I'm also happy that uh, this is really a very uh, happy moment. Uh, and you'll hear in a moment from um, Volodymyr uh, from the Ukrainian Institute, because they are attending the opening of a new art center, which is being uh, led by actually an ArtsLink alum, uh, Bozhenia Polinska. So we're incredibly happy that at this moment, there can be a new arts facility opening in Ukraine. We'll, I'm sure, hear more about that in a moment. So to, today, day two of the ArtsLink Assembly, uh, we're launching a new strategy document for Ukraine. It's be, called Beyond Greener Grass. And the document has been produced by the Ukrainian Institute in Kyiv, along with the independent think tank, SEDOS. Uh, so you'll be hearing from them about the process of creating the document in a moment. But the strategy really, as, uh, as, as you will hear, emerged from last year's ArtsLink Assembly. We gathered in Warsaw with uh, over 40 artists and arts leaders from Ukraine, really to look at how the future of uh, culture could be evolved and developed both now during the war itself, but also uh, what uh, changes needed to be considered and, and um, implemented for the future of culture in Ukraine. The document is available. Uh, it's You can find the link on our website at ccartslink.org. Uh, it's also on the Ukrainian Institute's website in both Ukrainian and English. So the strategy is framed around the idea of cultural reconstruction. And it's looking, of course, uh, at what that means from now, not after the war, but the implications now. So. It's important that we consider this is not about buildings. This is about a different kind of infrastructure. This is about the notion of how we can support individual artists and the independent cultural networks that now have to operate in a completely different context. And with many artists now dispersed around Europe, the uh, kind of war enforced diaspora. So the strategy focuses on people and the impact uh, Russia's war of aggression has had on the cultural field and the new immense diaspora of displaced artists and cultural leaders who've been forced to find safe spaces now around Europe and beyond. So through this three-hour session today, we'll hear of the current cultural context in Ukraine during the war and get a sense of how the strategy document has been developed. And then we'll have a short break. After that, we'll hear from key leaders in different areas of cultural practice about how the ideas in the strategy document relate to their specific areas, but also looking at more critical areas for how to move forward, how this document offers us a route map and what we need to be working towards in order to really establish a, a, a firm uh, structural cultural basis for the evolution of, of practice in Ukraine. So I'm delighted that the director of the Ukrainian Institute, Volodymyr Sheko, can join us today, live, I think, from the Jam Factory. So Volodymyr, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, how is it to be at the Jam Factory today? Hello, Simon. Um, it's a pleasure to join you today, um, ALS digitally, but um, I hope um, that today will bring a lot of insightful, interesting conversations to all of you. I'm indeed in Lviv, in Western Ukraine today, where the uh, incredibly exciting new arts center is opening tonight. It's heavy rain in, in Lviv, uh, but um, a great deal of Ukraine's cultural community have gathered nevertheless uh, to celebrate this and to pass on their greetings to the team who have worked uh, for many, many years to uh, reconstruct and rebuild the, the old historic site um, in, here in Lviv and uh, imbue it with new meanings and new senses into, and transform it into a very, very exciting and beautiful, um, beautiful cultural center. No, please, so, please give our uh, warmest congratulations to Bozhenyan and the team there. 
I will definitely I will <laughs> and it's it's great to also welcome all the participants uh, who have joined um, today's discussions and I would like to uh, start with saying thank you to um, Simon and CC Arts Link uh, for um, for our very um, intense and great and beneficial partnership uh, that um, has been going on for um, for more than for more than a year and we are very proud to present uh, today, the outcome of this uh, of this collaboration, uh, the document and um, the publication um, that summarizes uh, a lot of uh, research and analytical work that our teams and also um, the um, Setos Analytical Center have carried out to map out the needs and expectations and the most burning um, issues that the Ukrainian cultural sphere is facing uh, today so, and, and has been facing since the beginning of the full scale invasion. Um, we at the Ukrainian Institute, um, and by the way, we are, um, for, for those who don't uh, know us or, or, or may have heard about other Ukrainian institutes uh, at, at all over the world, we're a public organization, uh, or Ukrainian public organization that is affiliated to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine. And our mandate is to carry out cultural diplomacy internationally on behalf of Ukraine. So we um, exist and work to build cultural links and connections between Ukrainian cultural um, as operators, institutions, and individuals alike, and their partners in, in uh, many other countries of the world. We work in many disciplines, um, including visual art, film, um, music, uh, theater, uh, literature. We also work a lot with uh, international universities to advance Ukrainian studies and Ukraine-related research uh, at universities and think tanks worldwide. Um, and we also have an in-house uh, research and anal analytical department that helps us produce uh, papers and publications such as this one that we are presenting today um, to inform our work, but also to uh, inform work of other uh, cultural uh, diplomacy operators in Ukraine and internationally, and to, to uh, basically to advance their knowledge and understanding of the cultural uh, relations processes uh, internationally and Ukrainian cultural sector specifically. So uh, we are different organization from the one that um, exists in New York, for example. So the Ukrainian Institute of America is a, is a sister organization uh, that has been uh, working for, for several, for many decades effectively in the States. And also there is the Ukrainian Institute in, in um, London. Uh, we are we are not related. We're separate entities, but still we uh, we know about each other well, and we work together on on, on specific projects. Um, now a little bit about what why this piece of work is so important to us, because um, as a as an institution that basically um, works as a mediator and an advisory um, unit for for many organizations and individuals from Ukraine and internationally, we often get questions and inquiries about what is needed by the Ukrainian cultural sector today, who we can work with in Ukraine if we would like to deliver a cultural project in another country. Uh, can you map out a specific cultural sector for us so that we know who the main um, actors are and who uh, and their agendas and their interests and, and their organizational capacities, which is equally important uh, today in Ukraine, when a lot of cultural organizations um, have faced, um, you know, severe budget cuts, but also um, outflow of, of staff, and they are really struggling to even survive, uh, let alone uh, deliver, you know, big uh, or a significant inter international program. So uh, having received a lot of such requests and have responded to, to a lot of such requests, we felt it was a time to actually um, have uh, to, to base our decisions and to base our recommendations not only on our own um, individual subjective uh, views or anecdotal evidence or indeed some patchwork research that has existed uh, in Ukraine and internationally about this. We felt it would be great to uh, have you know everything in one place um, with a lot of uh, research uh, and, um, and, and you know mind work added to it to present a more holistic view of what Ukraine's cultural sector needs uh, uh, today and how international um, you know, operators, actors, organizations, grant uh, programs, institutions 
um, advocates for Ukraine and those who really want to support Ukraine's cultural sector, how they can build their programs that they match uh, the, the, the context of the needs of the local sector. Um, unfortunately, we know that some you know, programs, some initiatives uh, launched by our international partners have not worked the way they had intended them to work because exactly of, of that, of, of some lack of, of context, lack of understanding, lack of insights into, um, into, into the Ukrainian counterparts. So with this uh, piece of work, with this publication, we're really hoping to bridge that gap, to fill those knowledge gaps with, um, with uh, knowledge that, that would help uh, indeed our you know, devoted international partners to which we are of course, to whom we are very, very grateful for their, for their dedication and commitment to the Ukrainian cause. To be better at how they uh, structure their work, program their work, and strategically align that work with um, with the local context in Ukraine. So that's the setting and that's the premise of the of the document of the project um, that is to be discussed uh, today. And I'm really glad to see um, uh, my good fellow colleagues uh, from from uh, Ukraine, excellent speakers and excellent experts uh, who will um, again deliver their uh, remarks and participate in, in the conversations uh, today. So let me uh, let me stop here and let me thank again um, Simon and CCRT's link and Setos and um, my team at the Ukrainian Institute uh, for the for their hard work on on uh, this event on this publication and indeed on, uh, on on that continuous cooperation that has been in place between our institutions. And I wish you a very uh, productive day or evening, depends on where you are today. Vladimir, thank you so much.